Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll continue with what we were discussing in the previous video and that was about agaricus. So here we will take up the life cycle of mushroom or agaricus. What we saw was that there are spores which are released and the purposefully we are starting from the spores so that we come back to the point where these spores are produced. So when these spores are formed, these spores, they germinate to produce segmented, that means with septa, hyphae, which are uninuclear. So there are two types of hyphae, positive strain and negative strain hyphae which are produced. And these ones were called the primary mycelia. Primary mycelia very soon fuse to form a dicaryonic mycelia. Dicaryonic means each segment is going to have two nuclei and this one is known as the secondary mycelium. So primary mycelium normally degenerates and the secondary remains. So most of the times when we find the vegetative structure or we see the vegetative structure, we find only the secondary mycelia. Now on these secondary mycelia, which are segmented and all these are dicaryonic during reproductive season, we find a bulb-like outgrowth. There is an outgrowth which is seen, which is in the form of a bulb. Now what happens in this bulb-like structure is, this bulb-like structure is going to get bigger and we find that on the sides there is a constriction which is appearing and then here the bulb actually divides into two parts. In this part there is a depression which is formed that means the lower part and the upper part they get separated and then we start seeing an umbrella like structure and a stalk like structure which is seen. So this is actually the fruiting, fruiting body or which we normally call the mushroom. So this is what is visible to us when we see the mushroom. Now if we enlarge this mushroom, what do we find is, we find a stalk like structure which is called the style. There, there is a slightly wider structure to which the umbrella like pilus is attached. This structure is known as the annulus and Attached to this is that umbrella like structure. So this is the part which is visible to us. So let us draw this umbrella like structure and see what exactly is inside. So the structure is somewhat like this. And here is this stipe or annulus attached. Now if we see it from the underside, we find some very thin membranous structures. And these structures are called the gills. If we enlarge the gill, we'll see exactly what is there. But one thing which we have to remember is that all these structures, they are formed of the secondary mycelia or the dicaryonic mycelia. So if we enlarge one gill, we would find that in the middle there are these dicaryonic hyphae and these dicaryonic hyphae, they form the sterile part. That means this middle part is not going to reproduce. This part is known as the trema. Now, on either side we find that there are few more dicaryonic hyphae but here we find them into smaller segments 
and this is known as the subhymenium because this is the part from where we would find the basidia that is the reproductive structures growing. So we find these which are going to help in formation of the basidia. Now what happens is from this part there is a balloon like outgrowth and these outgrowths are seen on either side that means here also and on this side also. So now we have two more layers. This layer is known as the subhymenium and this layer is called the hymenium and these structures are the basidia. Now what is happening inside the basidium is there are two nuclei. So now if we draw the next stage these two nuclei they are going to fuse. That means here fusion of nuclei is taking place which is known as karyogamy. Fusion of nuclei. Whereas here it was only cytoplasmic fusion which took place. The nuclei of two strains were still separate. But here we get a diploid nucleus. Now this nucleus it undergoes meiotic division. As a result in the basidium we find one, two, three, four haploid nuclei. And now all these nuclei they migrate towards the tip of this basidium and form four basidiospores. So once the reproductive season starts these basidia appear and on each basidium there would be four basidiospores. So what exactly will be visible to us? Later on in the reproductive phase is these basidiospores. If you remember when we talked of ascomycetes, we said the number of ascospores varies from 4 to 8. If ascospores are produced after meiosis, only meiosis, then 4 ascospores are produced. And if that meiotic division is followed by mitosis, then eight ascospores are produced. Whereas in case of basidiomycetes, the number of spores is always four. So these are the basidiospores. And they are always four in number. Now, when the spores are fully formed, they are released and the spores are again going to germinate to form primary mycelia which will fuse to form the secondary one. So this reproductive structure or that mushroom body which is visible to us is seen only during reproductive season and these are the gills. So the entire structure is made up of dicaryonic mycelia except for these spores which are haploid. So when the spores germinate half of them will produce positive strain uh, mycelia and half of them will have negative strain mycelia. <coughs> we have also seen the examples of agaricus which are edible and the ones which are poisonous. There are two more members in the group Basidiomycetes and they are called Pucinia and Eustilago. Now, whenever we say there is a fungal infection, it could be Pusenia infection, it could be a Eustilago infection. Pusenia infection results into <coughs> sorry, the diseases called rusts. And the reason is that the spores are rustic red. Rustic red spores are produced. Eustilago causes diseases which are normally called the smuts and in case of smuts the spores are black spores 
and that is why the disease is known as smut. So there is a black powdery substance which is seen whenever there is a disease or infection which is called smut caused due to Eustilago species. And whenever there is rust infection caused, the spores appear reddish brown in color and that infection is because of Pusenia. So these two, that means Agaricus, Pusenia and Eustilago, these are the members of Basidiomycetes. Now in the next part, we'll talk about the last group that is Deuteromycetes and we will also take some more important examples of